Rodney Wood turn us on Captain Eddie Castle. Today I have what I think is going to be an interesting project for you. And we're not going to turn something, we're not going to finish something, we're not going to plan something else or fix a tool or make a gizmo or a gadget or any other things they normally do. Today we're going to do something that you come across pretty regular and you have to learn how to do. And it's not clean your shop. No, 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 no. Don't, don't get comedic on, on me. We're going to talk about how to fix a piece that just screw up. Oh yeah, I got one. I want you to take a look at it. All oh, you got to do to learn about this, watch. What you're looking at here is a piece that you may remember. I did this just a couple of weeks ago, did a video on it, two blocks made into a bowl, into a piece, nice, closed up, little pouty mouth on it, and uh, it was very well finished, as you can see. Now, I wanted it shiny, and I had a couple little imperfections in the finish, so I sat down here the night before I took it to a show and decided I would buff it out. Now, I always tell you that finishes need to cure, not dry, cure. Well, I should listen to my own advice. I didn't wait for it to cure. And I'd been rushing it for a couple of days to get it out of here. So I sat down to buff it out. And that is what happened to my finish. See if I can get it where you can see it a little bit better. I burned my finish. I had shine juice on it. I went back to see just how bad I burned it and marked it up even more. But I wrinkled out the finish. Oh, it was coming along really good. I mean, look how good it was over here and, and all and all the way through the bottom. It was really a nice piece. Um, I even concealed that joint in the center very well with opaque paint. But that was a killer. Now if I'd waited another day or so, or just was easier on the piece, but it heated up the finish and it rolled. And it is shellac, it is shine juice, and I didn't overtop it with anything. So I broke almost every rule around to make it fail. Almost every rule. Now with that in mind, I still took it with me to this wood turning symposium to share some ideas and get some feedback from a couple other turners. And I talked to some of the best in the business and every one of them agreed. You didn't wait? What was the deal? What are you slow? Captain Eddie will tell you, wait, let it cure. Well I did, okay? So now what do I do? About three or four of them said, get your apron, sit down, get you some wet paper, and take it out, and then put it back in. And I said, won't that leave a blotch? Yeah, but it'd be characteristic. I don't want character. I want it to go back to being as beautiful as it was before. So one of the great turners said, well, you know, you still got a square bottom on it, and it looks pretty flat. I mean, I cut me a glue block exactly that size, stick it back on a glue block and turn it, and then gently take it out and trim that block off. Nobody will ever know what happened. I said, wait, wait. Chuck it back up, put it on a glue block. You know, I could vacuum chuck it. He says, what part did you miss about pulling on this? Now it's a week or older. A week older. A week or older? It's like my little brother talking to now it's older, it's probably set, but he said if you did that the day you tried to fix this, you would have wrinkled this finish by pulling on it before it's too finished, before it's set. Well, I sound like Norm Crosby all around, creating new terms and new words. Alright, if he's right, the best way to refinish this piece is to spin it, and the best way to spin it is a glue block. 
you got to do. Huh. See you before. Watch. That is my one-way strong hole chuck. And I have a glue block in there. Oh, and forgive me, the noise you hear in the background sounds like the lawn sprinkler is our heat avoidance device that's mounted on the roof of the back of my house. And for two hours every day, it sprays water across the roof to reduce the heat buildup through the attic, which is through the house, through the rooms. And that water is recycled through cisterns. And then later on in the day, I pump it off into my gardens. It's an aggravating noise, but it keeps the house cooler. Now, this is the glue block turned out of mahogany. It matches up to this ideally. Not too big, not too small, just the right size. And I'm, what I'm going to do is with fresh super glue. I got this out th last night because my other one was getting a little thick. With fresh super glue. And this is medium thick CA Star by Starbond. I'm going to put one drop of glue around it. I don't need any more than that. I'll bring it up to the glue block, put it in place. And then I'm going to bring up my cone on my tailstock, and that's out of your sight, but here it comes. Cone on my tailstock, just because I want it to fit in there right. And then I'm going to spin it a few times by hand and make sure it's not jammed. Now, i got a little overage on the glue back here where you can't see. That would be the hardest thing on the finish. So I want to take off that big drip so I don't have to fight it later. Now, that piece is now ready to be spinning just like it was before. And we're going to start the refinishing process. It's not quick. Time passed. It's about 15 minutes now since we put the glue on it. I didn't put any accelerator down there because I didn't want that to put a mark on the finish. I really like the bottom. It's just going to get a light, light sanding to bring some stuff up gradually. And I don't want to sand too much on this center section. It's almost out of your view. But the center section is still in pretty good shape. Everything getting a light, everything will get a light going over. But up here in the front, where I have this wrinkle in the product, that's what I have to take off. And I'm going to start with 220 grit. This is a Blue Flex by Vince Welsh. And I like the 220. I'm going to put it on a pad and I'm going to do this without generating a lot of heat. So water. CO1, something will be involved. And I'm going to bring the speed only up to about four or five hundred RPMs. And it's running really, really true. Amazing how stable this piece remains. A few squirts of water. In a moment, there'll be a little slurry build up. But we're going to spin the piece out. and remove 99% of the finish from up on this upper section. You can see, if you don't keep the water on it, you're going to get a clog. And that will go away with more water. Let's bring the speed down a little bit more. I'm getting a lot of throw off. Now, I always get questions about what to do about the lake bed when I'm doing this. Well I sprayed it with WD-40 before I got started because I'm going to probably have some finishes, water with finishes, uh, just water and other stuff all over the bed. So what, why don't I just go ahead and protect it before I get started. Occasionally, you got to clean just the pad because the stuff does build up. So, a little WD-40 or spray or anything else. Now, if you got a mini and your motor's down there in the bottom, let's put a piece of uh, saran wrap or 
a metal foil, aluminum foil, or wax paper or something else across your ways and drape it so that you don't have it going through there, through the bed, and onto your motor. The motor will handle it, but hey, why, why take those kinds of chances? Now, don't wrap the motor with plastic and don't conceal the, the ventil don't, don't block the ventilation on it. All you want to do is keep the materials from going into it. And you do know that when you're cleaning up your shop, it's not a bad idea to blow the ports on that motor out every once in a while. Why? Because they do collect sawdust and, and stuff, and if you're removing finishes and they can reset right around those little ports, it'll affect the, the uh, cooling of the motor. Well, if you're storing your sealer and your finish all in the same kind of bottle, and you found out that if you write on it, the marks light, it comes off because of the thinner. This is my sealer, and you see it settled out, and when I shake it, it gets cloudy. It's just a simple way of going between them. Now, I'll tell you again. See, I don't want to rub off the other finish. I'm just going to dub this in. That's going to protect the stain from running. See, it does transfer a little bit. Once you get the first coat in and let it set up, I won't experience any major problems with it after that. And it's mainly around the perimeter that I have a little bit of a problem. I use DEFT, D-E-F-T brand, sanding sealer, and when I say DEFT 5050 or DEFT sealer 5050, see that sealed it up nicely, really nice. You can see how it, uh, it'll start to build along this edge, and I'll have to make sure I don't get any ridges along this edge. But when I say 50-50, I've cut it 50-50 with a thinner for deft. Deft cuts with lacquer thinner because it's a lacquer. So this is one half deft lacquer thinner, one half, I'm sorry, one half deft sealer, one half lacquer thinner. And that's the basis. And I'll spray this also with my small airless or my small uh, uh, high velocity low pressure gun. Um, it works very well for both of them. I've dabbed on a couple of coats of the sanding sealer and now I want to make sure the surface is uniform before I continue. So I'm using a scrubby. This is about an 800 grit. These come from Vince Welch at Vince's Wooden Wonders. Vince is my source for sanding supplies. Um, if you're building the self-powered sander and you're looking for the um, disc with the round shaft that goes in the sander, sort of like this. This is one of his new products. This has got a smooth disc, fits in a perfect quarter inch shaft, and this one, the pads change with a simple twist here. Really nice. Uh, I'm getting a full line of the, the grids to go with it right now. But that'd be a nice addition to your sanding package. That's available at Vince Welsh. Vince is wooden wonder. Once you have it down, remember to, to do that little snoop. Clean everything up. Then you can continue on with some some more sealer. We're going to start building the coat up with a finish. The thing is, as we're building sealer on and finish on top of something that's been finished, you sometimes get some lapping. Uh, make sure you rub between every coat and sand when necessary to get rid of that lapping. 
and I apply the finish from this point on using a little tissue paper. Uh, it's soft, very pliable, very absorbent, and I normally bring the speed down a little bit. Get we sand, we clean inside that hole, and we come up here. Don't try to overwork it. As you see, you still get a little bit of color transference until you get it built up. This cures, doesn't dry. So when you see me start to stop the camera, there's maybe 10 or 15 minutes in between each time. Like now, stop. As you can probably see, with one or two coats of sealer, and then I started building up the depth again over the top of it, I've got a pretty good finish on the piece. Now, in order to take out some flat spots and brighten it up a little bit, I'm probably going to sand it with 800 or 1000 grit. Look for those spots and touch them up with a little bit of CA. And I'll use, um, oh, let's see. Here it is here. The Super Fast Thin by Starbond. Um, I saw a demonstration by Alan Trout last week on how to apply it in real fast moves. And I think I'm going to try that. But first, this finish has to cure. And I think I'm going to wait. I think what I'm really getting to is the fact that I keep telling you this time and time again. Glue cures, finish cures, give it time, wait, don't rush it. Well, I had a beautiful piece to take to a show, and I really wanted to do it. But I didn't want to take the time to wait for it to cure and look good. If I'd waited one more day before I tried that compounding, or did it by hand rather than using a little machine, I probably would have saved the piece, and I would have saved a good six hours on the lathe fixing it. I didn't have that kind of time in a piece to start with, but I didn't want to lose it because it's a really special piece to me. So I, the, the lesson to be learned here is, if I tell you things have to cure, and I tell you that you shouldn't rush it, and I tell you that if you take your time it'll come out right, you really, really should listen to me. And the next time I see that ugly SOB in the mirror brushing his teeth tomorrow morning, I'm going to tell him the same thing. Wait! It will cure, it will get ready, and it will be nice. Just wait! No, he doesn't listen. Never listens. I mean, you. I often have to talk to myself just so I can get expert advice. But this time he didn't talk back right. So we will fix that. Bottom line is, I now can get this off the machine, go set it someplace and let it rest. I've missed the show, and I'm going to go back to making shavings. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Thanks for joining me. You take care. Don't forget, like me on Facebook. Go to Big Eye Productions on Facebook and like me. Please. It's for that guy in the mirror's sake. It's not, it's not all about me. It's for him. He doesn't listen. What can I tell you? See you later. You won't believe the kind of talk we're going to have tomorrow morning. It might get ugly. While well, we're looking in the mirror, it's going to be ugly anyway. Later. Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. What you just saw, the stuff on Ustream, stuff on the internet, Facebook, all that, all those are brought to you by Big Guy Productions. That's the holding company for the entire operation. If you want to know more about Big Guy Productions, go to my website, www.eddiecastellan.com. Here, let's see, right there. Yep, it's right there, eddiecastellan.com. That's where you're going to find deals on and I'm not talking about just deals, the best deals on carbide cutters anywhere on this planet or the next one. I've got the cutters. Now let me tell you a little something. 
under advice of the best copyright lawyer that I know, we can't mention or won't mention the brand models of the manufacturers that we match. So all you have to do is take out your, your cutter from your other rig, measure it, go to my website, do a comparison, and you'll find a cutter that will fit your rig. It's that simple. The only, the only little tweak is you're not going to give me $14 to $16 a piece. My, expose, my most expensive cutters are $8 a piece. And that price might drop real soon. You heard that it might go down rather than go up. And I've got a whole new line coming in around September 8th or 9th, I think they're showing up, of the new 10.7 millimeter, the square, the, the radius, and the 8 millimeter round. Got those coming. When they're available, it'll be on the website. Until then, just check me out. www. Wait, here it is again. Yeah. www.eddiecastellan.com. Take care.